times, in biblical times. Uh, he had the stature of a Bill's Gates. Uh, perhaps uh, he was written about in the Forbes 500 of his day. And no doubt, Wall Street did everything that they could to please him. He was a man of status in his community, uh, a man of influence with his peers. And no doubt in his church, they appreciated him not only for his tithe, but for uh, his ability uh, to model integrity. Uh, in fact, Hale Matilicky said that this parable ought not be called the parable of the prodigal son, but really it's the parable of the loving father. Uh, this successful gentleman uh, if you please, could have been happy with all of his attainments and with all of his acquisitions. And he could have glorified himself and found joy. Uh, I tell you in the fact that when he walked in to the bank, he never had to stand in line. Uh, in fact, he was uh, uh, a Mr. Somebody, but he didn't get his joy in that. He got his joy in his children. Somebody ought to say amen. And that's what makes Allen Temple so special. It's a church that gets its joy uh, in her children. As Solomon said, a glad uh, father is glad because he has wise children. And yes, if you want to make your parents glad, you ought to do something that they can be proud of. And I know parents like the father in this parable who have all of the miracle uh, uh, and all of the miraculous blessings that anyone could want. Uh, but yet, they're not happy because their children have let them down. But I want to tell you tonight that uh, the youngest son said to the father, uh, I'm going to show you something. Uh, I'm going to show you that I can do it on my own. But I want you to give me my portion of the inheritance. And since he was the younger son, and he only was able to get one third of all of the possessions. But the older son was the one that got two thirds. But you know, have you ever read the same passage over and over in the Bible. And you thought you knew the story, but when you read it uh, maybe this morning, or last week, or this past week like I did, you saw something that you never had seen before. Uh, that's the mystery of uh, God's Word. 
And some of you who say to the Sunday school teachers, I don't need to go to Sunday school. Amen lights. Amen walls. I've been hearing uh, that Bible story all my life. And I don't need to come to your class to get that same old story again. But when I looked at this text that I thought I knew because I had preached it many times before, I realized that I had overlooked that passage that says that the younger son said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided, this is the part I overlooked, so he divided his property between them. Had you ever seen that before? The father, uh, the oldest boy didn't ask for his a portion. He was willing to wait until his daddy died. But the younger boy uh, wasn't willing to wait. So he said, Father, give me. Lord, have mercy. And instead of the father just going to the bank and getting his attorney uh, to work out uh, uh, an arrangement to bless the younger son. Uh, he took the attorney and they worked out an, ar an arrangement to bless both. Did you see that in the story? Uh, the older boy didn't ask for his portion, but the father blessed both of them. So that meant that this was a loving father. Uh, the father gave the boy what he wanted without trying to reason with him. And sometimes when you're rearing your children, you know that logic won't help them. That you have to know when to let go of a child and let them go out into the university of hard knocks and learn for themselves. And so when this boy said, give me, that's the way uh, a spoiled son thinks. He thinks that uh, he exists just so Somebody can give him something. But the daddy had to let him go out into a mean world and find out for himself that life is not like it is at home. And uh, he lost everything. We don't know how he lost it. We don't know whether uh, he invested in horses. Yes, he put his bet on a losing horse. We don't know whether he spent too much time uh, at Circle Star Theater in Vegas. We don't know uh, how much the ladies of the street God. But we know that he did what? He lost it all. And the Bible said that when he came to his senses, he said, I'm a fool here. Uh, I've been blind. I've been blinded by my blessings. Say blinded by my blessings. Uh, uh, some of us are blessed, but we are blind. And, and if you are blinded by your blessings, you can't say praise the Lord. If you are blinded by your blessings, all you want is more. 
And some of us relate to God that way. Give me. Give me. Uh, and God blesses us. And what do we do? Do we share the blessings? No, no. We say to Lord, I need some more. Blinded by our blessings. And he was lost, not only blinded by his blessings, but he was lost in his location. Say lost in location. Uh, he was at home, but he was what? Lost. Uh, when he was at home, he was lost. But he had to go all the way to a far country, Lord have mercy, uh, to see how good it was at home. Well, I'm going to make somebody angry today, but you know a sermon ought to comfort the afflicted, and it ought to afflict the comfortable. Uh, some Folks don't appreciate what they have at home. Uh, and uh, they don't realize uh, how blessed they were until they leave home. And then home looks mighty good. And some people act that way in relationship to Allen Temple. Allen Temple is not this and Allen Temple is not that. When I was pastor, they used to tell me they don't teach at Allen Temple. But I never saw them at Thursday night Bible class. I never saw them on Sunday morning running to a Sunday school class. They spend the time in the breezeway. Uh, but yet, I uh, want to say they're not being taught. Uh, not participating in the teaching ministry of Ellen Temple. Uh, you know, but once they get out there and get into a new church and nobody knows their name uh, and uh, if they're going to get a position they got to stand in line to wait when they'd already moved up at Allen Temple. Uh, but when they get away from Allen Temple, every, it looked good. And some uh, know how to make the father glad. They have sis enough to come back home. But others are ashamed to come back home. Uh, I want to preach a little bit now. And he came to himself and said, well, uh, you know, I was better off at home. Uh, I was better, and in fact, the servants uh, who work for my daddy are better off than I am. Uh, here I am, I don't have any money, and since I don't have any money, I lost all my friends. Uh, uh, here I am, don't have enough money to buy a new pair of sandals. Uh, uh, for you see, when he uh, says, I will arise and go home to my father, uh, uh, Rembrandt paints the picture of the boy down on his knees saying, Father, I've sinned against heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But look at the boy's feet. Rembrandt has one sandal on and the other off. Couldn't keep the shoes on his feet. But when I was at home, when I was a son,